morning, Kurt. How are you? Hey, Dan. I'm good. How are you? I'm great. Uh, how do you expect tonight's game to play out? Uh, I expect it to be a low-scoring affair. I expect the Patriots to keep it close. Um, I expect the Texans to win solely based on the fact that I don't know anything about Jacoby Brissett at this level. So you go with the, the more veteran quarterback. Um, and Brock has played, I think, solid. Um, they haven't been great in the red zone, but I think they'll score enough. And, uh, you know, I, but I do think the Patriots might have a chance to win it in the end if Jacoby can make a few plays for them. We'll see. But uh, that's kind of what I expect. What kind of game plan do you expect from Belichick to have a rookie quarterback going against this defense? No, oh, I think it's going to be simple. Josh McDaniels is one of the best in the league, in my opinion, at creating easy opportunities for quarterbacks. He'll come out in the first 15, those scripted plays, and he will throw probably 15 different uh, formations, different movements, especially if you have Gronk and Bennett in there, uh, move them outside, and he will try to create easy opportunities for Jacoby early in the game. So I think he'll do a great job of mixing it up, and they'll get some easy throws. They'll be able to, you know, to move the ball and do some of those things. You know, it's those critical situations, the third down situation, the red zone situations where you're really tested as a quarterback to see what you're seeing, what you're knowing, to make some of those tight throws. And that'll probably be the difference in the game. If Jacoby can make those plays, I think New England has a chance to win this game. If he struggles there, you can only do so much designing things as a coach. Uh, but I think Josh McDaniels will have a great plan and, and will make some – Give him some easy opportunities, very much like he did for Jimmy Garoppolo against Arizona. Simple game plan, got some easy throws, and I think got him into a rhythm and um, able to win that game. What do you remember about your first NFL start? Um, yeah, I remember a lot. I remember, you know, the nervousness beforehand, running out of the tunnel. I remember, uh, you know, the name of the play, 271 F flat, um, that I threw my first touchdown pass on. I remember getting picked off by – uh, Ray Lewis, my first interception on a little juke route. I remember beating Rod Woodson on a slant and go with Torrey Holt to the side for my third <laughs> touchdown of the game. I remember a lot about that game. You threw three touchdowns, had two interceptions, threw for 300 yards. Made it look kind of yep. easy, didn't you? Well, I don't know about that. I, I, I had a lot of help, um, but it was definitely fun other than trying to chase Ray Lewis down and tackle him. But what, I, what were I did you, not do. What, was you, what were you nervous about? Yeah, I think the just nervous about, you know, you being on that stage for the first time. And I didn't have any questions on whether I could play. But the nervousness is you don't want your first game to be a bad one. You, you know you're going to have some bad games. But that first game out after waiting as long as I did to get there, you just wanted that first one to be good. You know, you just wanted to show people I belong here. Now, the second one might not have been as good. That's okay. But the first one. It was you were just so nervous because you wanted things to go right, especially early in the game. So now everybody on the sideline took a deep breath. All the fans were like, oh, okay, maybe this guy can play a little bit. And so that's where the nervousness came in. It wasn't so much, I don't know if I can play at this level. It was, I want things to go right early in the game. I'm looking at the first month of your career. 1999, you went 4-0. You threw 14 touchdowns and three interceptions. That's pretty good, Kurt. But that's kind of how I wanted it to go. <laughs> that was kind of how I, I had played it out in my mind. It happened to just work out that way. You know, the, the great thing about that situation for me was that the way Mike Martz saw the game and called the game and the way our offense was designed was very much uh, in line with how I played the game. So I was very fortunate that I didn't get caught in my first situation in an offense that didn't fit me, and I had to struggle through it. The throws that we made, the things he asked me to do, were all things that were my strengths. Um, and so it was kind of like a perfect storm. Not only did I have tremendous players around me, but I was in a system that really fit my skill set. And because of that, I, you know, I believe that's why we were able to have success and I was able to have success so early you know, in that season. He's Kurt Warner, NFL Network, joining us, Dan Patrick Show. How do you explain Jared Goff and maybe the lack of progress there? Uh, I mean, you know, it's always different for different guys. I think, you know, the hardest thing is that when I look at that situation, I don't know who's there to help him. You know, of course, Todd Gurley is there to help you. But when it comes to passing the football and you're a rookie quarterback, 
you need guys that can win on the outside. You need guys that can create opportunities for you on the outside. And I wonder sometimes with these young guys, I mean, we're looking at Carson Wentz and his success that he's having. Well, he's played against two teams where his guys on the outside were better. They were forcing him to throw against man coverage. His guys were winning. He was making the throws. That's a way to have success as a young guy. You'd like to think that that was set up that way in St. Uh, in L.A. with Gurley, that they're going to stack the box and give you one-on-one on the outside. But I'm just looking at it and going, okay, if you get that, who's winning for you on the outside? So I just wonder if the lack of playmakers around him uh, doesn't allow him to get the confidence and have the success early and maybe doesn't allow him to show himself and the coaches to gain confidence in him as well and may be a reason why he's a little bit behind the eight ball. Um, you know, but, but there's always a learning curve. You know, what's the offense like? You know, where did you come from? You know, how quickly can you grasp the ability to see and react to things? Um, and that's what I'm hearing about Carson Wentz that's so impressive is that even though everything's simple for them, he's seeing and reacting very quickly. His intelligence and his ability to react within that intelligence is very, very good. And so even if it's simple, he's able to get to the right guy, find the right guy, and make the throw on time where a lot of young guys struggle with that. Did you ever have a situation like you have now where Josh Norman would stay on one side of the field or uh, Richard Sherman stay on one side of the field? And, you know, so their best corner was not even like you could line up opposite your best receiver to their best corner. Um, I mean, yeah, I can't remember specifics, but yeah, there were times that I think, uh, you know, back in the day, if, if you didn't have a Deion Sanders, you know, not a lot of guys necessarily, you know, traveled because they weren't necessarily good enough to go, well, we could just, he's going to shut down your best receiver. So there was a lot of times we would play against teams where we knew, who their right corner was, who their left corner was. We knew what the strengths of each of them were. Even if it was their best corner, we knew how we could attack them. Um, And so we could always create accordingly and go, okay, this guy's weakness on the left side is this. We'll call that route over there. This guy's weakness is this. Um, Because you just didn't see that many, quote, unquote, shutdown corners or whatever you want to call them, where they would just travel and go, well, I can take away your best guy. And then I think on top of that, you look at some of the guys I played with, you know, I mean, you don't have a guy that can stop Torrey Holden and Isaac Bruce. You don't have a guy that can stop Anquan Bolden and Larry Fitzgerald. So even if you want to go there, I would create opportunities for that other guy who was also a number one receiver, and very seldom did you have two guys that could cover, you know, cover both those guys. Good to visit with you, Kurt. Have fun this weekend. Thanks for joining us. Sounds good. Anytime, Dan. That's Kurt Warner, NFL Network analyst, Super Bowl MVP, NFL MVP with uh, the Rams. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.